Hello, everybody, and welcome. OpenSUSE MicroOS, the immutable version of the Tumbleweed rolling distro, is under rapid development. A key target audience is lazy developers, those who don't want to tinker with their systems and just want to work on their containerized projects as quickly as possible. For this video, I'll pretend to be both lazy and a developer and check out what MicroOS can offer someone like me right after this. So I've downloaded an ISO from a few days ago to see how the update process works. Let's boot this on my Linux kernel hypervisor and do a quick install. Selecting option number two for the ISO. Let's go ahead and go straight to the installation. Let it load all its drivers, kernel modules, etc. So. Here we go, um, license agreement. So we'll pretend to uh, read all this and agree to it, the license agreement. So we have some options here, micro OS, container host, uh, desktop GNOME, which is release candidate, KDE is alpha, and we've got a couple of other options here we won't go into today. We'll try the release candidate and proceed. So it's asking for the root user password, I'll enter it twice. And uh, so partitioning looks pretty good. There is no swap configured, we'll deal with that later. Uh, time zone, we are at the uh, Pacific Los Angeles time zone. That's where I live. And uh, under network configuration, let's check everything else looks pretty good. Under network configuration, it's probably best if I set the host name here, we'll call it Moss1, and we'll not set host name via DHCP. So that's taken care of already. Get this install going as quickly as possible. And, uh, so it's gonna reconfigure the network. All right, so everything looks pretty good here. Let's go ahead with the installation. Let's click install. So it partitions and formats the uh, partitions and uh, installs all the packages from the local ISO, not over the network. It saves the installation settings, installs the boot manager, and we'll let it reboot. Okay, good. So it's rebooted. Running kernel 6.1.10, I believe. Okay, we'll just go breeze through these. All the defaults is fine. Set the time zone again. Auto time zone detection doesn't seem to work in OpenSUSE. I don't know why. All right, so my full name is Steven, of course. Uh, give myself a password. I can enter it twice for good measure. And we're all done. Start using OpenSUSE and MicroOS. So next installs all the FlatHub hubs uh, apps it needs. And then when that's done, let's see. Uh, so it installed uh, the extension manager, the text editor, and also the Firefox web browser. So those three things I believe it installed automatically from FlatHub. Let's pin the uh, terminal to the dash. Open up settings. Let's do some quick configuration here. Let's make this less glaring for my eyes. I'll switch to dark mode so I can read things better. So under sharing, uh, this computer name is grayed out because it doesn't work. Uh, in micro OS yet, uh, changing under sharing. Let's turn off uh, the uh, power management here and set the correct display resolution. Apply the usual stuff. You've seen this me do this uh, many times over the past videos. I'll increase the cursor size so you guys can see where I'm pointing. And uh, that looks pretty good. So helpfully, tweaks, GNOME tweaks is pre-installed. So let me go to appearance and fix the legacy applications. Uh, adjust the fonts to be bigger, hopefully more legible for you. Let's quickly go through this. And there we go. 
We can do title bars. I like maximize and minimize. And I'll switch on focus on hover. Okay. That's good. Let me uh, configure the uh, terminal quickly. Uh, you can smell my name right. <laughs> okay, I'll turn off terminal bell. Go with. Let's see here. Let's fix the colors first. I'll do white on black. I'll use the tango palette and show bold text and bright colors. Under scrolling, I'll turn off the scroll bar. Custom font, let's make it nice and big. Select. All right, good. So we've got a basic terminal configured. Close it and relaunch it. Yeah, that's legible, I hope for you. Okay, free dash H shows uh, we don't have swap configured. So I'm gonna be configuring ZRAM swap shortly. But first, let's check for updates. Let's do a sudo transactional update, dup, D-U-P, for distribution update. And uh, let it do its thing. So this is a manual update. So it's scheduled to update daily and reboot uh, as needed automatically every night. But we're doing it manually here, so let's sudo reboot since it created another snapshot and we want to boot from the new snapshot post transactional update. Okay, so here we go. Let's log in. So now our system should be freshly updated. Okay, so let's do a flatback update. Looks like we've got a GTK3 theme, a Dwight a Dark update. And uh, let's do that. And also, here's the list of pre-installed uh, flat packs as uh, distributed by OpenSUSE and MicroOS. Free-H shows we still don't have swap or ZRAM swap configured, so let's uh, fix that. Let's do a sudo transactional update, because we're modifying a system, right? Package install systemd-zram-service. Enter my root password. So it goes into a special environment for doing a transactional update using Zipper. And then it creates a new snapshot. So in order to activate the changes and avoid data loss, let's reboot now. Let's choose the hard drive. And as you can see, now we have two update, uh, snapshot updates, one for the system update and the other one for the uh, ZRAM package install. Okay, let's log in. Okay, so if I do um, free dash H, uh, it's still not enabled. So let's enable it now. sudo systemctl enable now zram swap dot service. Root password, and there we go. Now zram swap or compressed uh, swap to RAM is working. Cool. Perfect for an SSD-based system. Let's go to Extension Manager, which has been uh, installed on first boot, if you recall. Let me go to Browse, let me install User Themes. I won't take long, hey, folks, I promise. Just want to do some quick extensions here. Um, what else do I want? Let's see, App Indicator. Extension list, user themes. Okay, um, I'd also like to install, let me look for dash to panel. It's fairly popular, let's install it. There we go, on the bottom of your screen, you see the panel. No overview at startup, I just like to do that because I'm an old fashioned kind of guy. And we're good. So there's the extension list we have for your reference. Not too many, so that uh, we can upgrade without worrying about things. Okay, let's do a quick dash to panel settings. And let me put the panel to the left side of the screen. I won't do too much configuration here, such as, uh, as you can see, the, uh, the dates cut off on the bottom left here. Uh, I won't fix that. Uh, you guys can do that if you want. Okay, let me launch uh, 
the terminal and let me set up some distro boxes. So distro box list, distro box is pre-installed in the uh, micro OS ISO. So let's create our first distro box container for development. I like to develop on Arch Linux. I'll use the latest uh, image and we'll name the podman container arch-distrobox. Keep in mind that distrobox by default is non-root, so you can't really touch your system by setting up these uh, environments uh, using container images. So let's enter this arch distro box container and let it install everything basic packages. So let's make sure we're up to date. So again, we're in an Arch Linux environment using the host system kernel. So we're not having any uh, uh, performance um, reduction here using uh, containers. It's, it's fantastic. So we installed um, code. And uh, so let's export this app to code. So we're exporting it to the host operating system. And there you go, code OSS on Arch-Distrobox. So that's the open source version. So let's launch it, see how fast that is. It's almost instantaneous. So I won't go into uh, Visual Studio Code configuration, but suffice to say, you've got access to all your standard plugins so you can get going with your development. Again, you're not messing with your host OS. You've got a separate uh, uh, coding environment. And the bet worst you can do is mess up your home uh, the directory, but you've got backups for that, right? So next, let's create uh, an Ubuntu uh, distro box, uh, Ubuntu Podman uh, non-root container, because I know a lot of you like to develop on Ubuntu. Ubuntu seems to be a very popular distro for uh, developers in Linux. So there you go. That's done. Let's uh, go ahead and enter it, into it rather. It does the same thing, uh, sets up the, uh, the Ubuntu container. And then what we do is we just do a standard apt update and apt upgrade to make sure all our packages are up to date. And then you can install your Ubuntu apps such as, uh, well, let's do NeoFetch here. That installs a bunch of packages. Let it do its thing. which is pretty fast with this stuff. Okay. All right, and it's done. So let's type NeoFetch, and there you go. So we're using the host kernel. So the micro OS kernel is 6110-1-default. Okay, so we're just changing the user land. So we have uh, user land containerized for these distro boxes with no measurable um, performance mitigations here, uh, performance reductions rather. So you can go full speed ahead. So both distro boxes are using the same kernel, right? If I go on the host OS, 6110-1-default is the kernel we're running. All right, so very powerful. That's why developers love using containers. Container-based workflow is very popular. Okay, let's uh, continue here. Let's do take a look at uh, the health checks that microOS does. So, um, so it first does performs a health check, and then it's it it also then um, sees if it reaches the health check marker. So that sets a flag as to if the uh, most recent boot was successful or not. So it'll automatically roll back if the uh, if that last boot was not successful. So here's the health check uh, script. I won't go into detail. It's pretty esoteric and very in depth, but basically it checks for a flag has it been set or not uh, to determine if as a boot has been successful or not. Um, yeah. So it checks a file to determine. Uh, which snapshots are successfully booting. Uh, let's check that right now. Let me clear the screen. 
and do a cat var lib misc transactional update dot state. That's where it stores the record. So last working snapshots are two and one. Unused snapshots, non-tested snapshots are three and two. So it hasn't rolled back to this yet. So if I do a snapper ls, you can see the default current snapshot that we're running from is snapshot three, but we've got one and two as fallbacks. And uh, one was the system update and two was the um, uh, ZRAM package install. Okay. So let's do a sudo transactional dash update package install neofetch. So let's test this rollback system. Let's see how it works. I haven't been able to break the system enough yet um, to do a proper test. So we'll just do it this way. If you guys know how to uh, break the system and actually test the health check um, automatic rollback, uh, let me know in the comments below. Do share. Okay, so, so you got to reboot after every package update because it's an atomic uh, transaction. So here's NeoFetch. As you can see, there's our familiar kernel. And uh, let's just pretend that this NeoFetch installs something broke in the system. So let's check our snapshots that are available. So what I'd like to do is we're currently on four. With the marked with the asterisk, let's switch back to three, which is the pre NeoFetch install snapshot, right? So let's reboot again. Let's boot from the hard drive. Let's start bootloader from a snapshot. And we want the snapshot update of number two, which is snapshot three. So that should be prior to the NeoFetch install, where we pretend that the system is broken. So let's open a terminal, type neofetch, neofetch command not found. Yes, because we're in a prior snapshot. So let's roll back to it. But first, let's do a snapper ls. So 4 plus, that's the default. The plus is the default snapshot. The dash is the read-only snapshot we're currently booted to, just to, as a reference. So let's uh, roll back to snapshot 3. Let's just sudo snapper rollback. So ambit is transactional. Setting default sub volume to snap, uh, snapshot three. So we can reboot and let's boot from snapshot three, which is the default, as it's just told us. And uh, here we go. So if I open a terminal now, NeoFetch should still be gone, and it is. All right, let's do a sudo snapper ls. So Current three asterisk, that's our default snapshot that we're currently booted to. We don't need snapshot four anymore, so we'll just do a sudo snapper delete four. So then we've cleaned up the system. So if I do a sudo snapper ls, we've got um, a system as if we never installed NeoFetch ever. So that record is gone. Let's do a sudo butterfs subvolume list. So this is a pretty standard OpenSUSE uh, subvolume layout. And as you can see, it includes all the snapshots as well for roots. That's the only snapshots that are handled is the root snap snapshots by default. Uh, default is snapshot number three, of course, as I just mentioned earlier. Um, cool, so let's uh, make the terminal a little bit bigger. Let's do a systemctl list timers. Let's list them all. So as you can see here, we've got a, a daily system update that's scheduled, transactional update timer that calls up the transactional update service. And it's at uh, 030, um, uh, half an hour past midnight tonight. If you don't like that, because it can auto-reboot, uh, what you can do is you can um, uh, edit this. Um, so it says started daily update of the system. So what you can do is edit the um, characteristics of the timer, depending on your use case. So 
The randomized delay second is two hours, so if you have your laptop open, you know, like a few minutes at a time, you can reduce this delay second to maybe around, you know, five minutes, and that might work better for your laptop. So you can edit this file at the top, and you can modify the behavior of the timer. If you don't like this, if you'd like to do everything manually when it comes to updates, including reboots, you just, just disable the transactional update timer. And when you do that, if I do a list update all, you still see that the transactional update timer is still available, right? So you'll need to reboot to make that go away. Don't forget to reboot after disabling stuff. Okay, and uh, looks like uh, the system is working properly. Similar to Fedora Silverblue, another popular immutable RPM OS tree based system, for best results, try to find a FlatHub app first, then use a DistroBox container if needed for your workflow. Only use the transactional update to make your system work, such as drivers or core system utilities, or as a last resort. MicroOS is shaping up to be a great distro already, perfect for developer deployments and self-maintaining kiosks. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, stay safe and have lots of fun.